How's it hanging YouTube? Peter here, your Ginger Jody Geek. Welcome back to the channel and I am joined by my good pal Efren, Passpoint Comics. How are you Efren? What is going on comic book familia? It's a perfect day. Well, it's overcast over here so you must be happy. But Bless you. It's a perfect day because we're going to be talking about comic books. Absolutely. And if, you've, if you're new to the channel or you're watching on the Rewind, this is our recommended reading show. So myself and Efren um, alternate this. So one month it's on Efren's channel, next month it's on my channel. And basically what we do is we'll look ahead a couple of months to what comic books have piqued with interest in the previews catalogue. We'll do a little bit of a look at um, a recent read we've both had. And we also talk a little bit about a comic that's coming out in the next week or so that interests with. Yeah. So lots of comic related goodness for you. Everything will crack straight on. We've got Fuzzy of the Dunlop. Doesn't feel that long ago that we did this. It's a month, Fuzzy. It's a, it's a month, mate. Um, yeah. Time flies by, doesn't it? Time flies by. But we've got lots to talk about tonight. There are some cracking comic books coming out. Um, <laughs> Dead man saying, what are you going to cost us this month? And <laughs> we'll try our best, mate. We'll try our best. Yeah. What I tend to try and do, and I know everyone does the same, is um, there will be some repetition in this show of yeah. books that we'll talk about probably every month. But that's because they're good books and we want to recommend them to people. But we do also try and pick out some things that you might not have seen or have just kind of flown under the radar a little bit. So for me, for example, and we're going to get to it in a bit, but just looking at this front cover here, I didn't even realise there was a Destro comic coming out. So I'm excited about that. And we're going to talk about that one in a little bit. So, Efren, these are books that are coming out in June 2024. Yeah. Crikey, June already. I know. June already. This Crazy. year's vanishing. Yeah. It's scary. But, my friend, you are up first talking about... The, now, I wonder why you've picked Zartana. I wonder why you've picked that cover. Uh, I think quite a, not quite a few, but more than usual, DC comic books... Most of the time, I just you know go right past them. I don't pick them. But Stanley Lau is one of my favorite artists, and I just love this cover. Hopefully, this is a good story. It's Satana brings down the house number one. Um, it, the cover artist is Stanley Lau or Art German. Anytime he draws something, I just stop and look and admire it. And he's just a good artist, you know. And, uh, it's a stunning cover that one, Efren. I, I, I'm predicting already that this will feature on the Killer Comic Show. Um, I have no doubt Andy or, or um, Perpetual Comic, sorry, Andy or Charlie will pick this one yeah. um, as their pick because it's 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 striking, isn't it? It is. A, it's <laughs> yeah, I was like, dang, man. Yeah. You know, a girl with a top hat, you know, looks so cool, you know. But I just looked at this car and went, I gotta pick yeah. this, you know. So hopefully, yeah. it's gonna be a good story. It's issue number one. is written by Mariko Tamaki. It says, and now the moment you've all been waiting for, please put your hands together for Satana Satara, the greatest entertainer in the crappiest hotel and casino of Las Vegas. It's a good opening title, so it got my interest. And I don't think I've ever, you know, read a book from Mariko Tamaki. Unless, no, you know, me so neither. Storyline, you know. Zatanna is an interesting character. I mean, I've not yeah. read a great deal about her but i absolutely loved her in the old justice league unlimited cartoon yeah. i don't know if you ever saw that she featured oh, yeah. in that in a few course, episodes yeah. um so yeah great great pick and, and that and like it, i say stern cover yeah every time she uses her powers obviously she speaks backwards so yeah. i take my time and the books that i have read of her to understand what the heck she's saying you know i read yeah. backwards to make sure i get it you know but yeah, yeah stunning cover i mean incredibly powerful character really in terms yeah. of like the dc lineup do you know what i mean she's She's a, yeah, impressive, impressive. Yeah. So yeah, like that one, I think that's a great pick made. I've gone for this. Now, I know it is part of the great big Marvel churning out of, you know, LinkedIn books and all that kind yeah. of stuff, which which tends to kill any movement on a comic book for me, I have to be honest. Um, but this Blood Hunters has got us interested. I'm interested in the whole crossover event in terms of um, vampires being set loose in the Marvel Universe. But for me, this little mini series has got one of my favourite characters in, which is um, obviously Elsa Bloodstone, who I absolutely love. She was stunning in the Werewolf by Night and um, little Disney show a little while ago. But I love yeah. her as a character. She was in a great series a while ago by I think it was by Warren Ellis called Next Men. I don't know if you saw that one. Mm, no, that was really cool. So they had her in it, and she yeah, she had um, oh, I'll get his name wrong. So one of the chat helpers is it X twenty something the the Machine Man. So they had a, like a oh, version of him. What? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. yeah, it was a very cool series. So anyway, this is a, a kind of a, a cross on, um, a crossover event with the Blood Hunt 
um, mini-series. And it says the bloody chaos continues as the events of Blood Hood, Blood Hood spill across the Marvel Universe. When the skies go dark, what will happen when a group of vampires get a taste of the Hulk's gamma-irradiated wow. blood? Yeah, I think this sounds really interesting. Um, yeah. Good set of characters. And the artwork on the cover there has got us quite excited. I think that looks cool. Just before we move on, just want to quickly jump into the chat. We've got a lot of new people joining us. So nice to see you, Jason. Hope you're well. Um, we've got Andy. Uh, this is his favourite show on the YouTubes. Thank you very much, Andy. And we've got Thank Jason. You. Nice to see you, Jason, my pal. Nice to see you. Um, Fuzzy, 10 days until his birthday. Not long, Fuzzy, not long. Um, and Andy's in June as well. We've got Jack here. Nice to see you, Jack. Hope you are doing well, bud. Okay, Efren, next pick from you. Bit of Scotty Young action. Man, he has so many books coming out this month. I know you talked about it on your channel. I think it was last Saturday. Yeah. Um, I was watching the Rewind, and man, he's got so many books coming out this month. And I'm so hooked on um, Scotty Young. I think I, I ordered all of them so far. <laughs> you know, I was like, dang yeah. it, you know. So I just love Scotty Young covers. I and mean, this is to me is really a, a nice one. It says um, it's Black Widow and Hawkeye. This is an ongoing series. And it says Damon Dran has taken Hawkeye to bait the Black Widow. And Clint's only hope of keeping of keeping Natasha away is to trust her less than impress Symbiote. But the Black Widow has never been one to back down a, from a fight, even when it could cost her her, her life. I even have I haven't even read issue number one, but I'm interested in reading this series. And I just think it's a great cover by Scotty Young. I was on eBay and I found out that some of these covers are going to be in black and white too. Okay. I was like, dang it. Yeah. I'm, I don't know the are, the, how much those are going to cost. Are you a big Scotty Young collector then, Efren? I do have quite a amount. I'm, I don't go overboard on him, but every time I see him and like Art Adams work or Stanley yeah. Lau, you know, I'm always going for it. You know, I always like his covers and he's coming out like 27 of them, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Month. I go, crap, I'm going to order them all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, Shout like out to um, to Slab Crusaders over here in the UK who are doing a deal um, on all of the covers. For, I can't remember, correct us in the chat, I think it's around 80 quid, but they're also doing a deal, Efren, where you get all 27 books at a 9.8 CGC for £1,000, um, yeah. which is an incredible deal. An incredible they're deal. doing it here also. Yeah. You know, it's, I think it's about $1,200, you know, somewhere yeah. around that range. Um, I ordered the poster. Um, yeah, the, I got. I ordered it through another site, and um, it was like about seventeen dollars. I think he added on. I was screwed. I'm gonna get it. You know, I yeah. want it. So. Good stuff. Just gonna quickly jump to the chat. Um, did you just effing call me, Jason? I was saying hello to Jason in the chat above yeah. you, Simon. Call myself down, Simon. Um, <laughs> oh God, he's called you worse. To be fair, that's very true. Um. <laughs> We need a dang it, Bell. We do, we do, we do. Yeah, um, 27 in colour, and then there's 27 1 in 50 sketch variants. Wow. Yeah, that's what I was talking about, you know. So I bet they're pricey. I bet I bet they um, are hard to come by. They did the same with the Alex Ross ones, didn't they? I'm sure there was yeah. Alex Ross uh, black and white yeah. versions as well. I missed it, getting those. There's, uh, there's this group that I follow on Facebook. Back when they first came out, he put like a flash sale up there, just two of them, two lots, yeah. for $400. Yeah. And I was yeah. just a minute too late, and I was like, that was a good deal. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Good books. Good books. Yep. Okay. Next from me. Now, this is a bit of an odd pick. I wouldn't normally go for this kind of thing, um, but I, I do like Thanos, and I'm yeah. I'm lost off with where he's at in the Marvel Universe. I have to be honest. I, I'm a bit... I remember reading a few series a while ago, but I've not read any of his ongoing stuff. Um, this is an annual... And it kind of just kind of picked my interest a little bit because it's talking about the Infinity Stones. And it's basically saying that the Infinity Stones are now housed within individuals. Um, so they incorporate into actual people like Star, who I think was in the Captain Marvel books yes. a couple of years yeah. back. Yeah, she was. I don't know much about her, really. Quantum, yeah. who I've never heard of. Um, Overtime, never heard of. And Prince of Power, never heard of. They either and multitude who I've never heard of. So yeah, so this has got us interested. I'll probably just read this just to see what it's it's kind of all about. Um, but I'll probably not continue on unless it really blows us away. But I'm interested to know what's going on with the Infinity Stones because, like I say, I've kind of lost lost touch with them a little bit. Have you been reading any Thanos? Yes. So recently, I read a book. Um, I forgot the I forgot which book it was, but. He basically came back. They found out he was coming back, and they were trying to, you know, the Avengers were trying to, you know, 
he was after this one girl and everybody's going, why are you after her? It turns out she was like, she was deaf. Ah, okay. You know, she went right. back to it. This one woman lost her child and she reached out to death, but she made such an impression on death that she came back to see what, you know, life as a human would be. And then Thanos found out and he made her, you know, pay your death, you know, and then they, they fought, but she said, she said, I don't want you. I don't want to be yeah. around you. And he captured her. Okay. And that's where it ended, you know, and that's, so that's the last I read of him. It was only about a month ago that I read this series. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Interesting. I'll, um, yeah, I'll pick this up just to see what it's like. Yep. This is a nice cover reference. I like this one as well. Yeah, there's been a couple months since the recent Something is Killing the Children by James Tinney. And I'm always, I've always been a fan of this series since it came out, you know. So, but obviously, it's hard to come out with a book every month. So, they have taken a break. So, this is a new chapter um, of the Something's Killing the Children, it's number 38. Uh, it says five year foil stamp. It's been five years since this book wow. came out. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So this is during the third vicious escapade into Erica's secret past. She finds herself squandering off with a monster worse than nightmares. However, as she struggles to live another day after yet another battle, it becomes clear that an even more deadly monster lies at the heart of it all. And it will take all the new skills she's acquired to track it down. So, yeah, I mean, I just love this cover and you can see the monster inside of her, you know, yeah. in the belly, so and hopefully it's a good storyline. You know, I love this series, you know, so gold for your stamp i like that i like see that's going back to i used to love the old kind of yeah variant covers and all that kind of stuff the hologram covers and things so oh, yeah <laughs> yeah so that that would be pretty cool i like that i'm totally lost off with something that's gone the children i read the hardback and i'm waiting yeah. for the second volume to come out but i've not read any single issues yeah. um so i'm looking forward to, to reading that we've got a quick just before we move on we've got a question from andy here um for an apologies a little off topic do you own a comic any comic original art it feels like the natural progression for someone with the color of books you have no i mean i have some reprints of uh, artwork um i have some right here you want to take a quick look at it i'll go get it you know you're saying you don't Efren, but i would i would argue that your um your peach bamoko poster stand thing that you got that's original artwork oh that's right? true yeah i didn't think about that to me original art would be like from the 1960s you know like a jack yeah. Kirby original art you know i've yeah. collected like copies of them you know yeah. i have one signed by stan lee you know but, and um, you've got a lot of um a lot of blank cover sketches haven't you i have a lot of blank cover sketches but to me that question like i said it seemed more like it meant you know like from the yeah, 1960s yeah. you know something like jack herby yeah. or somebody would draw or john romita you know something like that yeah. but you know i don't you know. yeah are you going to grab something there sorry yeah, yeah, I'll right back. okay i'll just talk about my next book <clears throat> so next on the list for me is good old ultimate spider-man number six i'm absolutely loving this series so far and this is the conclusion of the first kind of opening arc um i think we've just recently read issue three um and it was great i'm 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 excited about spider-man again which is is you know just something i didn't think i would be um but i'm really enjoying this ultimate universe I don't, are you reading this one Efren? i finally caught up with it and i like how he I remember reading the storyline how um, the maker stopped from the spider from biting Peter all those yeah, years ago, yeah, yeah. and just what his life would be like. But so yeah, I finally caught up with it. And I love it. You know, I, yeah. I didn't get issue number one. It's when I stopped buying them for a couple months. Any comic books, and when just when this book came out, I stopped yeah. buying some books. I wish I did have issue one, but it's a great storyline so far. Yeah, yeah, it is, and the artwork's great in it. I know Fuzzy's been enjoying it, and a few of the other guys have been enjoying yeah. it. Let one know in the chat what you think. Um, Andy's just saying any original art or sketches and the likes. I'm stepping away from comics and into the original artwork. Check out, I don't, can't remember if it's on my channel or Efren's channel, but we did a, a couple of videos, didn't we, Efren, where we showed yeah. off some of our, some of our um, sketches. comic book covers, sketch covers. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. We're worth having a look at, Andy. What you got to show with him? I bought this at a, like a, a flea market here in uh, San Diego a couple of years ago. Oh, no, I went to a comic con and they were just buying them. And, and uh, the um, artist, the two that she was going to have to sign up for me. It's not an original, but I got it. Oh, nice. Yeah, I like that. I think this is Jerry Conway's signature right here. He was at a con and I had him sign it. You can see yeah. John Romita's signature right here. Yeah. So I thought it was a good Yeah, no, that is very nice. I like that. Yeah. Not original, but I, I liked it, you know, so I got it. I've got a couple of pieces, Andy. Um, 
off when I when I first got back into collecting comic books, I got into kind of getting stuff off eBay. And do you know how you're never quite sure if it's genuine or not? But I got a couple of pages of, of um, original artwork from Justice League and things like that. Um, and I'm not sure if it's the inked pages or not. I'll, t I'll show you some of the images next time I'm taking some photos and whatnot and send them your way because I, I like them, but I'm not 100% convinced what they are. And Efren, I mean, Andy's saying there, um, awesome, we'll have a look. Thanks, boys, and sorry for going off topic. Absolutely not off topic, Andy. This show, oh, you can ask what anyone you want. We need it. <laughs> yeah, but I th I'm just thinking, Efren, you know, we, we should probably do another revisit that sketch cover one because that was good fun. Looking at, I'll have to remember which ones I've shown, which ones I haven't. Yeah, but Peter, I just got my sketch back from WonderCon. Oh, did you? I'm. A, I already made a video for it. I'm probably going to drop it tomorrow. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to talk all about it. You know. So. Yeah. Good yeah. stuff. Good stuff. Thank you, James. Thank you for for that, mate. Um. Okay, Efren, you are up next. This is exciting. Okay, so um, this is Space Ghost number two. Space Ghost number one hasn't come out yet. This is the cover by Francisco Matina. <laughs> This is written by David Peppos, who we're going to interview in a couple of weeks on our on a channel. So I, I've okay. seen him at WonderCon, and I, I've I've interviewed him before. He's a really nice guy, and I said, "Hey, would you like to come on? You know, and, you know, talk again? You know, on our channel?" He said, "Yeah." So in about a week or so, we're going to interview him, or about two weeks, and then. I'm excited for that because David brought well. He's writing the current Punisher run, but yeah. he also wrote um, the, devil. the Devil That Wears My Face. Yeah. yeah. I talked to him about that book and, and he goes, that's my favorite book too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so I was like, that's a good storyline. But anyways, um, this is like a, a new take on space ghosts. This is, they call it the, they call it the ghost planet. Now Jan, Jay's blip and space ghosts travel to the ghost planet. The, the mysterious headquarters of even more mysterious space ghosts. Like I said, issue one hasn't even come out yet, but he's, he is a really good writer. If anybody wants to check him out, He's written some Avengers books. Uh, he's written Moon Knight. Uh, he's, he has his own independent books. He wrote the OZ, for Occupied Zone, but it's a take of Dorothy in the um, you know Wizard of Oz land. But it's his granddaughter. It's her granddaughter that goes back to um, the land of Oz, but it now is like an occupied zone. Yeah. A really good storyline. I highly recommend this writer. Very cool. So yeah, um, Efren's managed to, to queue up a few interviews for over yeah. the next few weeks. So looking forward to this. If you've got any questions you'd like to ask David, please do drop them in our Instagram chat um, and we'll have a look at those. Yeah. But yeah, really looking forward to that. Just before we move on, just going to quickly jump to the chat. Thought Bubble is going to be good for getting some um, sketches and art. I'm open to commissions, by the way. Um, so you, you're absolutely right, Andy. You know, that, that's been my focus when we've been to Thought Bubble the last few years. And there's some stunning artwork on display there not just from big name artists as well from you know from um amateur artists are stunning yes and andy's saying there he's open to commissions joking but i've seen andy's artwork and it's phenomenal so andy you really should probably think about that mate because i'd get a sketch cover off you um I'd, I'd happily pay you for a sketch cover mate um can't wait for this number one sold out in a huge number of comics i'm i'm loving the cover artwork i'm interested in it um, but I have to say, I'm very naive to Space Ghost. It's not a character I know a great deal about. Like James, it's probably my only recollection of him is from that cartoon, yeah. the Hannah Barber cartoon. Yeah. Um, I don't think... Did Alex Ross do covers on a Space Ghost series 10, 15 years ago? I seem to remember Alex Ross doing some work on, on a book. Um, he may have, but from what I know, Space Ghost has always been campy. He was like a lawyer. He was, Oh, no, he had his own like variety show like on Cartoon Network. Right. Um, but you know, David Peppos, you know, he's a really good writer. So I want to see what his take on it is going to be. You know, yeah. so very interested in it. You know? and yeah. The devil that wears my face or his face. Yeah. Oh my God. Such a good story. I love that. You're, you're the one who told me about that. I completely yeah. agree. You know? I love that. Yep. Well, it's Alex Cormack is a, I'm a big fan of Alex Cormack's artwork yeah. and it just, that book is phenomenal. So yeah, looking forward yeah. to that. Um, one pound and a banana shot. Done. Done, Andy. Done. <laughs> um, See if I don't mean if you're live today, is there no live tomorrow? There's always a live, mate. We're doing a live tomorrow as well. So, yeah, we'll be doing a live at nine o'clock tomorrow night, talking about lots of interesting stuff. Um, Andy saying he did, and James loves Space Ghost Coast to Coast. That was the yeah. interview show. I remember that. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Um, so yeah, looking, looking forward to that. That is going to be an interesting one, everyone. Yeah. I've picked this purely and simply because it's one of my favorite ex characters. Um, although, as I've said on this show many, many times, I'm a fan of Ilyana Rasputin 
magic from back when she was in the New Mutants and she was the dark child and she had like the demon yeah. half of her and things like that. I loved that storyline. Not so fond of the, the interpretation of her now. But anyway, this is a, a again another link into that Blood Hunt miniseries, but it's a specific book about her. So, um, and the cover looks cool. I like the look of the cover. So I'll be picking this up just because I'm a fan of this particular character. And it says, after the fall of the House of X, Ileana Rasputin um, has returned to her homeland to search her soul and steal, um, to search her soul and steal it for what comes next. Makes no sense. But how will she protect her first home when a vampire army descends on Russia? Seeking to turn into a living hell. She may have been forged in the fires of limbo, but has prepared, but has prepared her for the blood hunt. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm I'm looking forward to this. Fuzzy, I absolutely agree. The trade grass is criminal. That's a stunning looking cover and it's just spoiled. We talk yeah. about this a lot, don't we? This trade dress thing is starting to really great in us because it does spoil the beautiful looking cover work, you know? Yeah. But yeah. Are you a fan of this character, Efren? Oh, I love this character. And one of the things I like about when we do this month monthly show, you know, we go through a list, obviously, of comic books, advanced orders, and I completely went right over this one didn't even notice it i love this cover but like fuzzy said uh, a virgin cover would have made it more better yeah uh, get rid of the trade dress you know for yeah. sure it just seems seems like it gets in the way it does it does yeah, yeah cool cool book yep what the hell Efren, howie what this, this is a marvel book and would well, you uh, know what do you know what? Just just before you tell a little bit about this, you sent us this image, and I thought, Efren's gone off the reservation here. Why the hell are we reading Uncle Scrooge and the Infinity Dime? But then I clocked, it's written by Jason Aaron. Yes. I mean, I, yeah. So tell me about this, Efren. Okay, first of all, as a cover artist, is Alex Ross. You yeah. know, like, dang, I, you know, I'm going through the list of comic books, you know, I was looking at the pictures first, obviously, and this one just seemed out of place with all the Marvel characters. Now, usually Disney, you know, this doesn't seem like it would be on a Marvel list, but it is. But, you know, they own it, you know, now. So this is here for the first time ever, Marvel and Disney team up to bring you the story of the century. <laughs> it's the story you never expected. One of the greatest characters in the history of comics leads into his most epic adventure in the manner only Marvel can deliver. When Uncle Scrooge's fabled money bin gets stolen by a shocking culprit, and the world's toughest duck must undertake a quest like unlike any other. So I, it's different, you it's know. It's certainly so, different. Oh so, yeah. yeah, you know. Before you know, I give it a thumbs down in a couple of months. <laughs> I'm gonna read this book and just see what it's about. And it's written, like you said, by Jason Aaron. I go, dang, you know, just I, curious to see who's gonna show up. You know? I mean, you sent this over, and I did. I thought, what on earth? But then I didn't clock that it was Alex Ross at first. Yeah. So that was interesting. I don't think Andy did either. Um, but then the reading the synopsis, Jason Aaron, who I'm a massive fan of, it's saying Infinity Dime, so I'm thinking it's going to be linked to Thanos or something like that. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna have to get this and read it. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I love how he's got the Huey, Dewey, and, and all the rest of them in the clouds at the back oh, there. I didn't even notice that. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, what yeah. is it? It's Huey, Dewey, Lu Louie. I don't know what the fourth yeah. one is. Anybody in the comments, if you want to know, if you can name all four ducks, his uh, yeah. nephews. <laughs> Huey, Dewey, Louie, and... I don't know. And Stewie? No. Mm, not sure. Not sure. Someone let me know in the comments what the four nephews are called. Yeah. But yeah, interesting. I like the look of it. Yep. This one, I didn't even know this was a thing, Efren. So, a little while ago, we talked about the fact that DC will bring her back Elseworlds as a label, which okay. I absolutely love. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Frank, <laughs> I don't know, I'm fuzzy. I'm not sure it's Frank. I'm not sure it's Frank. It's Luke, James, Simon, and <laughs> I'm not sure. um, <laughs> Hi, Canadian Survivor. It's nice to see you. But, um, ah, three nephews, and Donald is the fourth. Right, okay. that makes that makes sense. That makes sense. And we've got Kenneth. Nice to see you, Kenneth. I hope you are well. Oh, wait a minute, um, the Donald Duck is his yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I never knew that. Wow, you learn something new every day. Uh, when I'm looking at the image, yeah, the top one's definitely Donald, isn't it? Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. God, that's right. Better. So, yeah. all right, it was Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Yeah, yeah, good stuff. So, yeah, so so DC are bringing back the Elseworlds label, which I absolutely love. And they're starting with a sequel to one of the best Elseworlds out there, um, Gotham by Gaslight. This cover is just 
flaming amazing. I think this cover is just beyond brilliant. Um, and this is a sequel, like I say, to it. It says the new era of Elseworlds kicks off with the return of its crown jewel, the mysterious and gothic world originated by Brian Augustine and Mike Mingola, when a mysterious meteor falls on the wide open plains of the Midwest, it will unleash a chain of events that find Gotham's bizarre Batman contending with not just the twin threats of the Catwoman and a mysterious international assassin, but also the emergence of superhuman beings beyond all comprehension. Mm. I can't wait for this. I love Elseworlds. I love any kind of take. We've talked about this before, Efren. When we've been reading comics for so long, I like stuff that's different or shocks us. Yes. And the best way of shocking us is by bumping off big characters. Do you know what I mean? Yep. So I like the fact that when I'm reading an Elseworld tale, everything's open. Any Anything yep. can happen. The main character can get killed, you know? Yep. Um, so I'm all in for the Elseworlds. This looks amazing. Stunning cover artwork. Um We've got 15 people watching. Thank you very much, everybody. Please do hit that like and subscribe to both my channel and, of course, Passpoint Comics. Just going to quickly jump to the chat before we move on. Um, we've got Kenneth joining. Well, nice to see you, Kenneth. I hope you're well. And we've got Chris Bell. Nice to see you. I hope you're well. Just caught the duck tail. <laughs> I see what you did there. I used to love duck tails. Yeah. Um, yeah, this should be good. Um, James Keegan. Dang. I have to get this. Love Gotham by Gaslight. Yeah, it is superb. And uh, Martina covers are too dark and gloomy for me. I think. And um, I think they're pretty cool, fuzzy. I, I just I don't know. I like the the sexiness of it. Yeah, yeah, looks cool. Okay, Efren, this is a good. But you'll please fuzzy with this one because me and fuzzy are reading this and loving it. I have to oh say. Oh my god! I, when I first started reading this book, I said, "A guy with a bowling ball? How good can this be?" But eh, I love this series so far. You know, he's like. I mean, he's got all his bowling balls. He's got like uh, somebody helping him to make, yeah. to make all these gadgets work for his bowling ball. First of all, yeah. So it's just to me, it's just a really good storyline. This is this Holy Roller number seven. Uh, so it's the day ha it was written by Rick Remender. The day has come. The horrors of yesterday rise like a zombie and infect modern thinking. Everyone's been poisoned, leading to a sickness that blinds them, and only one man can see the light. Only one man can save us from ourselves. It's probably our hero, right? Basically, this person comes back to to the city that he grew up with, grew up in, but has been like taken over by gangsters. I think Nazism is involved, and yeah. his dad, you know, was there to help him out, you know, and he's just trying to save the city. And he's a bowler, but <laughs> I know that's funny, but at the yeah. same time, it works because these bowling balls have different tricks that they, he can do with them. Yeah, so, and it's a good storyline. You know, they get into the characters' past too. You know what's going on. You know, but so I, I highly recommend is Holy Roller number seven of nine. So I, I have to give Fuzzy Dunlop props for this because he really, really kind of championed this book. And yeah. I read the first couple of issues and thought, oh, it's, it's all right. It's a bit silly. You know, there's drug use in there. And, yeah, and I'm an old fart. I don't like that kind of stuff. But it, you know, it was an interesting book. But then once I kind of just said, right, this isn't. This is tongue in cheek. This is silly. Do you know what I mean? This is not, you know, um, and just went with it. I absolutely fell in love with it. Yeah. And I think, you know, the fact now that he's basically, he's like Batman, isn't he? He's basically yes. got a suit of armor. Yeah. Each of his bowling balls has got tricks in it and things yeah. like that. And I'm just loving it. It's just, it's brutal as well, mind. I mean, he's literally caving people's heads in left, yeah. right and center with these yeah, bowling balls. Close -ups. And when he beat yeah. up uh, the bad uh, head gangster or mobster, when he yeah. beat up his son, Dang, man. <laughs> yeah. you know, but it's a good story i highly recommend it okay i'm gonna have to stop there Efren, um, and just give people a chance to because they, they're kind of getting it out of the system you know what i mean um so fuzzy saying best uh, bowling balls nazis i'm sold who yep very very cool yeah. dead man best bone comic out there <laughs> and then this is this is where it starts Efren. andy it strikes a chord with the reader <laughs> so you did there so you did there um i was split on this one <laughs> Jesus. Um, I tried again the first you couldn't pin it down. Um, it's definitely not a turkey. <laughs> Wasn't up my alley. God almighty. I kicked it to the gut. Um, Reddit Lord couldn't hear a pin drop. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You are on form tonight, guys. Well done. Um, so, yeah, that's Holy Roller number seven. I'm loving this. It's a, it's a great book. Good, good read. 
Okay, I didn't even know this was coming out. I don't know why I didn't know it was coming out. But this is Destro number one. Destro, for those of you that don't know, is a big G.I. Joe character. We've seen him hinted at and, um, and kind of linked into um, in terms of the Energon universe. He's been appearing in um, Duke now and then. Um, great character. It's the nat natural next step, I guess, as the start kind of bringing Cobra together. Uh, this is by the the incredible team at Skybound. I can't wait for this. Everything so far um, has been brilliant. Um, so I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So Fuzzy's just asking there. We're going to touch on this in a second, Fuzzy, because Scarlet's out this month as well. Both out the same time. Um, I'm not sure what weeks they come out, but they both come out the same month. Um, <laughs> we've got Dead Man jumping in. It's a 300 from me. Wow. <laughs> wow and that's how we roll absolutely absolutely so yeah looking forward to this i've just ordered a one sixth scale action figure of destro because i think he's a great character um yeah looking forward does this interest you um Efren? have you been reading much of the energon universe i've been reading uh, the energon uh, universe but there are some times when we surprise each other peter i've never heard of destro so <laughs> i just never heard of him you know yeah. but if you recommend it i'm gonna read it you know so yeah it's i mean he's a he's a one of the main bad guys in the gi joe cobra okay. universe kind of thing um yeah just an interesting character interesting character so that i'm looking forward to that one next ahsoka okay so first of all this is written i i looked at the cover and i i liked it you know it's a striking cover i'm gonna get it but i mainly looked at the writer rodney barnes who is one of my favorite writers. He's doing Philadelphia right now, you know, and he does other Marvel books. So this is written by Rodney Barnes. He did The Return of Blackula. And this is yeah. after the fall of the Empire, Ahsoka Tano stalks the galaxy for Grand Admiral Thrawn. A valuable prisoner escapes New Republic custody. A search for answers reunites two old friends. So I, to me, Rodney Barnes can do no wrong. I mean, he's one of my, you know, one of my favorite yeah. artists, him along with James Tinian. So, um, but yeah, I'm buying this book and I'm going to read it and hopefully it's a good series. And I love this cover, you know, so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Fuzzy's straight up Rodney Barnes. I'm oh, sorry, but he's good. <laughs> yeah. um, get out, Andy, get out. Transformers 7, it wasn't a letdown. How dare you? Uh, th so, Efren, this, this, this has us slightly worried, I'm going to be honest. Okay. Because, and I'll tell you why, because... I know Rodney Barnes is a great writer. We both love his work, but he wrote the the um, the comic version of Mandalorian. Remember, mm -hmm. in the first issue, it was literally just almost word for word the first episodes of the season of Mandalorian. It, it, okay. it, this reads the same. I don't. Is this isn't a separate tale, is it? This is going to be a retelling of the Ahsoka TV series, by the sounds of it. God, if it is, I apologize. <laughs> well, when I, I, I just don't know if it is or not. The way it reads, I kind of think, that is that going to be just the retelling of episode one? I'm going to take this back now. I think it may be. But it's that last sentence, where the rebels be able to track down their lost comrade, Ezra yeah. Bridger. I don't know why you would do that, though. Yeah, I mean, that's what they did with them. Um, they did with the... I can't remember which season of The Mandalorian it was, but I remember picking the comic up because Rodney was reading, uh, writing it and thinking, good, this will be great. And it was, it just wasn't good. Some of the artwork and it was pretty tough as well, to be honest. Um, oh, we've got Phil. Nice to see you, Phil. Hope you're well. I agree. Uh, Transformers was chopping back. Take it back, Phil. It's not nice to see you. It's not nice at all, mate. Transformers was great. I don't know. Um, I think it's just comic rehash of the show. Yeah, yeah, I agree. This series is just all cover by to me. It is a stunning cover, mind Andy. I'll give you that. Um, I, I will give you that. Um, I had the same issue with the Mandalorian triple. Yeah, I mean, it was such a letdown, wasn't it? <laughs> Phil said he's never heard of a Ahsoka before. I don't believe that. Um, and yeah, the artwork was horrible inside. I remember reading that book, and this is a one that Andy, um, I'm sure, was sending me some images of the, the horrendous faces in the book because they were awful. Bliss. But yeah, well, interesting. Maybe in a couple months, I'll be my nope, no way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I've picked this. This is Geiger number three. We read this for the Killer Comic Show last night. Bit of a plug. Please do make sure you check out Killer Comic Show every Thursday night at nine o'clock. So we read Geiger issue number one. I'm completely fresh to the, the Geiger universe. Never read any Geiger before. And it absolutely blew me away. 
I thought it was stunning. Um, so yeah, I've put this in because I want to pick it up. I will be picking it up, but it's got two covers. This is the cover B, and I absolutely love this cover. It's kind of an incredible Hulk homage, you know. It okay. just looks oh, yeah. amazing. Um, so yeah, have you read much Geiger, Efren? Is I that read book the first volume of it, and I really liked it. You know, I haven't picked up. Has issue number one come out of the new series? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we read that. It's absolutely brilliant. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Um, and he's trying to make my head go red. <laughs> the faces, the faces. That's right. I remember that fuzzy. Um, the Geiger Ghost Machine Machine Universe sounds right up my street. Need to catch up. Absolutely, Phil. Um, Geiger was brilliant. Red Coat was pretty good. Um, but the the other one. Oh, someone remind us. Is it Rook? Remind us in the chat. Is it Rook? Um, which isn't, I think, linked to the overall universe, but is a superb read. Well worth picking up. Um, I really enjoyed it. Um, okay, next from you, Efren. I like this cover, mind. This is a cool looking cover. Yeah, I really like this cover. It's a Harley Quinn number 41, uh, written by Teeny Howard. Um, there ain't nothing like villainy. The sweet sound of bank alarms, the wind blowing through her your hair in a stolen car, not to mention the discounts you get buying bang flags in bulk. <laughs> But yeah. every now and again, the sweet candy of crime has one heck of a sugar crash. I just really dig this cover. Um, so I know Harley Quinn is kind of like an anti-hero now. She's she's gone on the good side, you know. She's helping out yeah. Batman's family, so to speak. So I, I think this is a cool-looking cover. And yeah, I'm gonna read it. You know, I, I have not been reading Harley Quinn at all. Yeah. Uh, but I think I'm gonna jump on and read this one and just see how this series is going. Yeah. 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 Um, Fuzzy's just seen here. I can't wait to get my Ghost Machine issues. Fuzzy, I don't know if you spotted, but Forbidden Planet um, had a deal on where you got all three issues, all of them signed by Jeff Jones um, for, I think, 20 quid or something. It was very, very cheap. So I've picked up two sets of that, so it might be worth checking those out if you if you fancy the signed versions. Um, okay, next from me. Um, I wanted to mention this. I know it's a book, um, Efren, um, but this is out in June. This is the Geiger Deluxe hardcover. So if, like me, you're excited by Geiger and you want to go back and pick up some of the older issues, I, I love a hardcover rather than a floppy. Let's make of that what you will. Um, but this is the oversized hardcover collecting Geiger 1 to 6, portions of the 80-page giant and 30 pages of bonus material. Um, so I'll, I'll be picking this up, I think, rather than going back and buying the, the singles and whatnot just to get myself immersed in the Geiger universe. Do you remember last year at Comic-Con, and I got, I sent you a Geiger. Yeah, I, you I, have. Don't, I don't even know what I did with it, you know. But yeah, I think it's it an Ashcan. Like, yeah, Ashcan, yeah, they were just yeah. giving them away, and I, that's one of the books that I sent you. Yeah. You know? That may have, yeah. I think that's probably gonna have a little bit of a backstory of his, of his um, origin too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've got that after, and I can't remember. Um, I don't think I actually read it. I think I've just kept it in the in the. Yeah, me um, too. The comic <laughs> I yeah, I don't even know where it is anymore. So yeah, but to be honest, having now read issue one of Geiger, it's got us excited for the series. Yeah. So I will go back and have a quick look at that and see yeah. what it, see what it is. Um, let's see, Phil. Let's just say seeing you talk about the Rook need to get out. Rook was superb, Phil. Well worth a read. Um, I've bought them all. They're just delayed. Um, and I've got the trade for a fiver. Oh, that's not bad at all, Fuzzy. That's not bad at all. Yeah, you mentioned, was that on Amazon, did you say, Fuzzy? I think you said on Amazon. I might check that out. Um, okay, not heard of this one, Efren. Me neither, but this, to me, looks like, oh, at least looks like kind of, to me at least, an homage to Star Wars for some reason. Mm -hmm. In fact, looks like Darth Vader, so. Um, but this is Falling in Love on the Path to Hell number one. Is written by Gary Duggan. It says, uh, let me see here, double length first issue of their groundbreaking new series, The Sunset on Samurai and Gunslingers, at roughly the same time, but our two leads don't die off, don't die off quietly. In the East, Asami, an Ona Musha warrior and female samurai, would rather die with their weapons than surrender them to the sword hunt. In the West, the gunslinger McWraith follows his revenge to the bitter end and pays the ultimate price. The future lovers are mortally wounded, a world apart, and awake together in, pur in a purgatory ruled by a ruthless society of damned warriors. So to me, this is the kind of books that I gravitate towards. You know, they're not normal books. And uh, whoever thought like a gunslinger and a samurai would be united in a series. So yeah, Absolutely. I'm interested to read this book and hopefully it's a good one. It's by Image Comics. 
that sounds really interesting. And a couple of guys in the chat are saying they've got it ordered and that Jerry's a solid yeah. writer. It it sounds right up my street, that one. And I think Image Comics, you can't go wrong normally with yeah. Image Comics, can you? So, yeah, I'll probably be picking that one up as well. I know I've talked about this before, but I cannot not talk about this because it's the end of the story arc. This is Infernal's issue number five. Um, this has just been an amazing series. I don't know if you've been reading this one no. yet. So th this is great effort. Basically, the story of this is that the son of the devil, um, who's based on Earth, is is dying. Um, so he's kind of gathering his children together to see who's going to take over the family business. And, and it's just been amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, we're three issues in, I think. Three issues, I think. Um, and it's been brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Now, I'm not sure if this is an ongoing or if this is a limited series because it says end of the story arc. It doesn't say end of the series. Do you know mm. what I mean? Yeah. I kind of would have presumed it would be ending the end, you know, the full end of it, but I don't know. The artwork's stunning. Um, well worth reading, Efren, if you've not read this one. I think it was Fuzzy who got onto this one by um, mentioning that Alex Cormack was doing the cover B for, for yeah. the first issue. So that's why I picked it up and it was just everything I like about comics. You know everything I like about comics. Um, we've got <laughs> sorry, mate. Which is everything. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. We've got uh, sixteen people watching. Thank you very much, everybody. Please do hit that like and um, subscribe button for myself and Efren's channel. Just going to quickly jump to the chat. Um, Fuzzy, saying good to this is end. Yeah, Fuzzy, is it oh. is it definitely finishing? Because like I say, that says end of the arc. Interesting. I'm not sure. Um, and he's laughing. I'm talk, taking full credit for Was it? I don't think it was you, Andy. I think it was Fuzzy that pointed it in my direction, mate. Um, issue three comes out next week. Settle down. <laughs> Andy, oh, it's all kicking off. It's all kicking off. Um, correct. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, Efren, you're up. What's this? Not seen this one. Me neither. And uh, I never knew this character even existed. This is Misery number one of four by a written by Todd McFarlane. Um, the cover just, you know, I went, wow, what kind of cover is this? This is a miniseries premiere. Cyan Fitzgerald is just a young woman trying to find her place in the world as the daughter of Wanda Fitzgerald, the former wife of Al Simmons, aka Spawn. She has been endowed with incredible abilities, abilities that keep her cut off from those around her. Her journey into the darkness starts here. I never knew he was Spawn. I don't read that much Spawn, so you know. But obviously, he has a daughter. I'm assuming so. And this just cover, you know, just got my interest and is written by Todd McFarlane. So I'm gonna buy it. You know, see how it is. So I've just spotted there. And I think yeah, the guys in the chat have mentioned it as well. It's, it's Simon Grinsky's artwork. He is one of my favorite creators at the moment. So I don't normally read Spawn stuff, if I'm Me honest. I read a book that Andy recommended, Rat City, which was kind of a, a cybernetic version of Spawn. Didn't didn't encourage us to continue reading, I have to be honest. But I'll probably pick this up purely because of Simon's artwork, if yeah. I'm honest. Thank you, Kenneth. I do appreciate you sticking around, mate. Um, enjoyed Simon Twitch. I've not read that one yet. Uh, Andy's positively moist for that. That's very cool. Listen, guys, this is fantastic. We've got 18 people watching. Really do appreciate that. We don't normally do it on this show, I don't think, but we'll do a bit of a giveaway, shall we? So hashtag June um, and we'll give away some comic books. So hashtag June in the comments um, and we'll do a bit of a comic draw in a few minutes. So that's hashtag June. Fuzzy or someone stick hashtag June in for us just so others um, Kenneth and people can see what, what we're asking for because I haven't got a slight to show it. Spot on. So a hashtag June, ladies and gents. Stick that in the uh, in the comments um, and we will give some comic books away. You know what? I have a, a bin right next to me. I'm going to put in some comic books in too. So whoever wins, um, give me your address and I will send you some books too. Oh, you're a so good you're man. A big winner today, whoever wins. You know. Big winner. Big winner today. Good yeah. stuff. Um, right. Why is people are doing... <coughs> excuse me. Why is people are doing that? I want to mention this. This is another element of that Skybound Energon universe we're talking about. Scarlet, another big character in the G.I. Joe universe. Again, didn't realise that this was coming out. Um, so really, really looking forward to seeing this. Um, Scarlet's one of my favourite characters. But with, with Scarlet, you, you're kind of pretty much guaranteed a bit of snake eyes 
action going on there as well. So that's what's got us excited for, for this book in particular. Loving this universe. Really do recommend people have a little look-see and pick that up because the Energon universe has been phenomenal so far. Efren, love this cover. One thing, if James Keegan wins... I'm not sending him. I'm not sending him the book. It's not going to get back to me. I'll send him to you, Peter. And the next time you see him, you can just give him the book. It'll probably be easier that way. Because, like for some reason, when I ship stuff to James, it takes at least three, four weeks. When yeah. I send something to Peter, it takes less than a week. Yeah. <laughs> you know, James, if you win, I'll send you the book one of these years. So, yeah. but anyways, this is Batman Superman World's Finest. I've been loving this series since this came out. It's one of those storylines that is not part of like the normal DC universe, you know, continuity. It's like they can go their own way. And this is written by Mark Wade. Uh, this is something that's destroying the fifth dimension. And if an army of evil imps can obliterate all the joy and life from the from an entire reality, what chance do Superman and Batman stand against it? So I this is I, this may be a new storyline, but I highly recommend Batman Superman Rolls Finest. It's been a good read so far. I've been enjoying, but I haven't read the full thing, Efren, but I did certainly dip in to, um, <laughs> Andy, I was stealth typing there, I was stealth typing. Um, yeah, I, I, um, I dipped into this when they were doing the um, Kingdom Come crossover and really, really liked that. Yeah, that, that was, was really very, good. very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, great, uh, great, great, um, great series. We've got James Breen in the chat. James, we've just been talking a little bit about your fantastic Scotty Young deal. Um, stick the details in the chat, James, and people can jump on that if they, if they want. <laughs> um, yeah. Was he using his feet? Was it that obvious I was typing a separate message? Is that... <laughs> Oh, you know, you guys. Next, we've got this. Again, I, th I have to give props to Fuzzy of the Dunlop because I didn't even realise that this was coming out, I don't think. This is Nemesis Rogues Gallery. This is following on from um, Mark Miller's last mini series, which was pretty, pretty impressive, I have to say. A big game. Um, I don't know if you read all of that, Efren. Yes. I thought the, the original yeah. series was great. I think <clears throat> it faltered a little bit at the end. It was a bit too easily wrapped up for my liking. Um, but I love the character of Nemesis. So he kind of he got bumped off at the end of Nemesis. Um, and this is him coming back, I guess. Really interesting character. So this is from the best-selling and award-winning creator, Mark Miller. Um, proud to present the debut of a brand new arc of the best-selling thriller, Nemesis. Immediately following the events of the smash hit um, Big Game, Nemesis lies broken and destroyed and hell-bent on vengeance against every single person who wronged him. Love this. Absolutely love this. Cannot wait to get into it. Cannot wait to get into it. Um, so you read Big Game, Efren, yeah? I was going to pick this book, but I go, Peter's going to pick this one. I just do. <laughs> but I know you, you're more into Nemesis than I am. I don't know much about yeah. the character. But I did read that last series, Big Game, when at the end he got all beat up and everything. Yeah, you know? yeah. I was like, wow. So, but I knew you were going to pick this one. I was about to click on it. I go, nah, Peter's going to pick this one. <laughs> you know it so well. You know it so well. Um, <laughs> James is in 81.99 stacked for 27 raw books, bag and boarded, of course. And he's also doing a fantastic offer where you can get um, all of them at 9.8 for a thousand pound. Which, I mean, we mentioned at the Killer Comics show last night. I have to say, if you are um, business minded, I have no doubt you could get a hell of a lot of return on your investment for all of those 9.8s. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a, it's a hell of a deal if you've got the money to put out for it. Uh, Phil saying Fuzzy's the new Oracle. He absolutely is. Yeah. Um, 89, 89 shipped. Uh, da, 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 da. Put your link up, James, so people... Yeah, people stick, your, stick your link up, bud. Yeah. Um, anything I could use to become PM again. <laughs> oh, I just realized this, Liz Trust. Nice to meet you. Thanks very much for joining. Um, right, Okay let's let's do our um giveaway efren do you want to put should we send all of the books that you've got and i've got to one person or should we do two separate giveaways what do you want to do say that again do you want to send all of the books because i'm going to give away five books and i know you've got a few books okay do you want to do that for one person one winner or should we do a giveaway for me and then a giveaway for you and get two different people getting um things? why don't we do it for two different people so everybody yeah. has more of a chance to win than just one person Good idea. How many books do you give away? Normally five? I've got five to give away. Okay, I'll pick five too. I just happen to have a bin right next to me. These are just books that I'm just always going through. So 
Good man. Okay, here we go, everybody. Um, we've got 21 people watching, but only 14 in the uh, in the giveaway. Hashtag June. Stick it in quickly if you've not already and 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 at hashtag June, and we're going to run that in five, four, three, two, one. Good luck, and we're off. Let's see what oh, who wins tonight. <laughs> I'm sorry, Andy. Congratulations, Andy. I just saw the name before yours. I missed. I missed that one. I missed that one. Um, salty salmon flaps. That's an interesting one. So uh, our winner tonight is Andy from Perpetual Comics. Um, Andy, let's pick you some books. So. We'll go to me big box. Uh, I'll just pick five random ones, Andy. Ugh. I'm afraid there's no Judge Dredd in here, Andy. And the last one. Okay, so, Andy. This is... <laughs> This is what you're getting. Um, you have won <laughs> a very old school G.I. Joe, issue number 59. I hope they get better. You've got, oh, that's nice, Spider-Boy. Um, Spider-Boy number seven. Nice, cool book. <laughs> Renovance, Zombies on a Train, signed by the writers and the artists. Any idea what that is? <laughs> Did you oh, that's a it? comic book, guys. Presents. Is that that comic shop at your near to, Andy? No idea. No idea. Um, that's nice. That's an old school mood night. I think that's a minor key. That's a nice one. Up, ah, and you've got a, another key. Nice. First appearance of um, Monica as Spectrum. That's quite a nice book. This is nice, Andy. You've got a doubler. You've double dipped, mate. This is nice. You've got the interconnecting covers for Dracula. Wow. So that's quite a nice little book. I like that the one. James Tinian book that just came out? Yeah, James Tinian. So this is issue, I think it's one and two, isn't it? Yeah. Issue one and two with the interconnecting cover by, um, what's he called again? Martin Simmons. So yeah. Nice books, Andy. I shall send them your way, bud. I've got your address, so I can send them to you um, later on. Good stuff. Right, we'll do another giveaway. Um, let us just get myself spared. And I will ship to the UK. I'm getting used to it now, so I've been shipping stuff over to Peter and Luke and James and some other people. So, you know, it's not as big of a hassle as it was before. Yeah. <laughs> For yeah. me, at least. You're an old hand at it now, yeah. aren't you? You're an old hand at it now. Um, so we'll do hashtag winner. So hashtag winner. And we'll draw that one in a little bit. Um, okay. Andy's saying, can I donate them to the charity event? Of course you can, Andy. Chat, chat to us afterwards, mate, and we'll see what we can do. No problem at all. Um, so hashtag winner is for the next one. And we'll do that in a few minutes. Okay. Let's continue talking about comic books. Efren, this one not heard of. What's this? Me neither. I mean, it's by Dark Horse Comics. It's, it's um, Kill All Immortals. It's written by Zachary Kaplan. Um, the title just got to me. Succession meets John Wick with immortal Vikings. A thousand years ago, Viking explorer Eric the Red and his four adult children they discovered a mysterious source of immortality. Now in our modern world, they are an enigmatic billionaire family with a powerful banking empire. But when Eric's only daughter, Frey Asvald, seeks to finally be free from her family's influence, she must be prepared to reveal their supernatural secrets. Like so I, I just like the cover. Um, it reminds me of some other book cover, but I just don't remember what it is. You know. Um, so hopefully it's a good storyline. Uh, I, you know, this reminds me of something a little bit of Kill Bill for some reason. You know? I, I was thinking um, Pulp Fiction. I don't know why. Oh, yeah, I, Pulp Fiction too. Yeah. Yeah, I so recognize that. read. Um, you know, like I said, we always like these indie books. Yeah. Um, Phil's saying Kaplan name sounds familiar mm. um, to a book I enjoyed. Title completely escapes me. Mm, not sure. I don't think I've heard of them. Um, I realize this isn't the point, 
at all, but the cover actually says kill all mortals. No. Ah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it does. You're right. Could so kill. Yeah, yeah. Get you. Get you, mate. Yeah. Definitely got a Tarantino look to it. Yeah. yeah agree. Yeah. Agree. Okay. Next one from me. This is a wow. one for you, Efren. I've picked this one for you, Efren, because I think you'll like this one. This is Seance in Asylum number one. The cover just jumped out at us. It looks spooky. This basically says, um, 1865, uh, defunded spiritual medium Alice Wilkinson is brought to the Ashcroft Hospital at the behest of Dr. John James Templeton. He offers Alice a second chance to revive her once thriving career, perform a seance amongst the patients in order to draw out mental maladies. Alice performs her first series of seances with the patients, including traumatised soldiers returning from the Civil War, women whose sanity has slipped through their fingers, only to realise their sessions might work all too well. What no one knows is Alice is a fake, a liar and a cheat. So why are all the patients suddenly acting possessed? I think that sounds interesting and creepy. That sounds right up my street. So yeah, I'm keen to get into that one. That one you'd read, Efren? Uh, yeah, uh, for some reason, when it comes to scary movies, you guys know that I'm always kind of, you know, standoffish on it. Don't sure, not sure if I want to, you know, see it or not. But for comic books, it's different. Same yeah. as a movie. I think a movie, just the music and just the darkness of it. But a comic book, you can just put it down and read something else, you know. Yeah. So, but yeah, I'm definitely going to read this book. I love the cover. Yeah, yeah, looks spooky, right yeah. up my street. And then you've picked this Efren. Now I was going to pick this. So this, yeah. this, I love that image. Yeah, I love this image too. It says celebration, celebrating 700 issues of the Uncanny wow. X-Men. Um, so this is written by Gary Dugan, uh, various, uh, I think, cover artists. Or this cover artist is Pepe Larraz. It says, the end of an era, Uncanny X-Men number 700. All good things must come to an end. And, and as good of a thing as Krakoan era has been for mutant kind, its time has come at last. The tragedy and triumph of fall of the House of X the madness and mystery of rise of the power of X. They all have come to their end and led to this moment that will change the future of mutant kind for years to come. So yeah, I love this cover. It basically has, you know, a lot of the mutants on there, you know, leading the way. And I noticed that they have the original Warren Warrington, uh, yeah. the original angel, which angel. I like more. You know, and you know. he's champions outfit. That's what he wore when he was oh, in the champions. True. Yeah, and I noticed yeah. that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And they have Banshee out there. I think the original Banshee, but I know yeah. he died. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you know, hopefully it's a good storyline. I have to say, I enjoyed the, I enjoyed the opening of the kind of the Krakoa age, and I enjoyed the theory of it, but I've totally lost my way with X Men over the last couple of years. I've tried repeatedly to try and jump back on, yeah. and just not getting anywhere. So, I, I am looking forward to it coming to an end and restarting. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely picking this up. I'm definitely going to get into this. And I'll give all of the new X books a couple of issue try at, at least, yeah. just to see how they go. See how they go. Um, oh, Efren, have you read Uncanny Valley no. number one yet? No. Uncanny Valley number one out this week. We're hopefully going to be reviewing it on the Killer Comic Show um, next week. I hope. Um, loved it. Now I, I have to be honest. I went into this a little bit negative, and um, a little bit a bit moany because. Um, I'm a huge fan of something epic and I, I was worried that this was just a, a bit of a, a swipe at that and a, a copy of that. But I don't think it is. I think the first issue was really good. Um, so this is by Tony Fleece, who I think is an incredible writer. Um, it mixes base. Yeah. yeah, straight on. It mixes basically um, the real world with the cartoon world. So, yeah, I... I uh, I'm really enjoying the first issue, so I'm looking forward to reading this. Andy, thank you so much. Um, very, very, very appreciative of that, my friend. Really do um, appreciate that. Thank you, bud. Um, Uncanny Valley is great all in. Me too, mate. Like I say, I, I went into it a little bit, ups not upset, but worried about it just being a, a copy of Simon Kransky's stunning work, but I don't think it is. I think it's a really interesting book. Um, ah, fuzzy. Fuzzy, fuzzy. Yeah, let us know what you think of it, Fuzzy. I'm interested in your take on it um, when it comes out. Another pick I first seen from Fuzzy and the Oracle. Absolutely. <laughs> um, Dead Man, awaiting number one. Yeah. Um, 
James, Peter, would you read X Men again if they'd done a horror version story? I would, mate. To be honest, I'm I am going to read all of the relaunched issues because I'm a at heart bit probably a bit like you, Efren. At heart, I'm a X Men X Men fan from Definitely. back in the day. You know yeah. when I know you got some foil covers recently, Efren. I watched on your latest video of yeah. that original kind of when the relaunched X Men one. Yeah, the Gemini I was yeah. yeah, I was all in back then. You know. Me too. Um, it's just the recent few years have become so complicated and so complex to my little old brain. It doesn't work anymore. Um, okay. Hashtag winner. Please make sure you've done that and we will draw those in a few moments. Um, agree, Phil. The Krakoan era started so well and then it just got so bogged down that I, it just lost the enjoyment for me. I, I agree on that, but I just keep on reading it. You know, yeah. I, just, I, I'm, you know, I just want to see what happens, you know. So I'm so used to, I've been reading you know, freaking comic books for 50 years. So. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, first, I'm not going to say who the writer is on this, but I'm sure, you know, but <laughs> this is Philadelphia number 36. It says, end of story arc, death be not proud, part six of six, the latest arc of the sold out Eisner Award winning series. For the first time, which I really enjoyed when they did this, they were brought together Spawn, Savage, Dra Savage Dragon, and the cursed one known as Blackula himself, which I thought was cool. And they brought in Nita Hodge from uh, the series Nightmare blogs because they're in the same universe. So this is a continuation of this storyline. I really have enjoyed this series from the beginning. I've never been to Philadelphia, and hopefully one of these days I'll get there. But um, it's a great storyline. I'm I'm love uh, yeah I love Philadelphia. Um, I tend to read it in trade paperback more than single issues. Yeah. Um, Jason Sean Alexander's art style is phenomenal. Yes. I'm not sure. The guys in the chat, I don't know if Andy's still around or not. Has Jason Sean Alexander ever been the Thought Bubble? Because, I mean, I would love to get a sketch or something off him because I think his artwork is just stunning. Um, Fuzzy's saying, if Michael Keaton was in the X-Men, I would be all over it. Absolutely. I'd be buying three or four <laughs> copies of every book, mate. Um, Son of Dad 58, I've enjoyed Krakoa, but 100% it was its best at the start. Yeah. Yeah. This is a series I loved at the start, then they took a break and I never went back. It's worth reading, James. It really is. Yeah. This and I, I tell you the first arc of Oh Help is um, Efren. Rita Rita Hall's Nightmare Blog. Yeah, Rita Hall's Nightmare Blog. Yeah. They're in the same universe and she came on this series too, because her series ended. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I just have enjoyed it, you know. Yeah. So. Rita Hall's Nightmare Blog was really cool. Really yeah. did the really did enjoy that. Yeah, that's right, because he did. He did really interesting stuff. Um Okay, so before we move on to, to comics, we're not going to be picking up. We'll pick a winner. Um, so Efren's going to pick some books. We'll see who we've got. Good luck, everybody, and we're off. I changed my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Son of Dad 58 with a stunning image of Transformers there on yeah. his, um, his little icon. I like that. I like that. Okay. Son of Dad 58, please drop Efren uh, Passpoint Comics a message on Instagram and he'll get these books to you. Let one know in the chat, Son of Dad, whereabouts you are in the world, if you're a UK based or if you're a, a yeah. USA based. Efren, what are we given? If you're a USA based, I might throw in another book. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it does count, you know. Um, so um, let me pick the books out. And this is just a bin that I just happen to have next to me. And most of these are modern books. I'm just going to pick out. Um, five books i'm not going to see who they are do it like peter does if it's an expensive book i'm putting it back in <laughs> oh, there's his x-men one yeah amazing fantasy 15 <laughs> <laughs> no, no no way those are kept away <laughs> have here one two three four pick the last one here so son of dad 58 oh, jump, yeah, nice book okay jump on to um Efren's instagram Make sure you subscribe to both channels and then send him your address. He's in the UK, Efren. Oh, he's in the UK. No worries. Like I, you know, I've done it before. I may ask you to verif to rectify some. When you put your address, I may ask you questions because I just want to make sure I get it right. Um, yeah. I'm at Passpoint underscore comic. So if you look for me on Instagram, just leave me your name and your address and I'll ship them out to you. Uh, here's the first one. This is Future State, the next Batman number three. Oh, nice. I like that cover. This was all yeah. impromptu. I wasn't going to do this, but since Peter did, I just had the urge to do it too. So this is Venom versus Carnage number one. Gwenom versus Carnage. 
Oh, nice. I've not seen that cover before. Uh, Star Wars, The High Republic, number two. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, Teen Titans, Future State, uh, number one. Nice. Okay, this is a Gwenom versus Carnage again, so I'm going to put it back and get one more. I don't want to send okay. you two of the same book, basically. Let's take this one. Oh, okay. Damn, I mean, I want to do this one. <laughs> but I'm going to send it to you. It's a King in Black uh, variant edition. Oh, nice. I like that one. Yeah. I've not seen that cover before either. Me neither. I got so many freaking books. You know? so, yeah. Kind of Very cool. Attention. Very cool. I'm going to send you those five books um and uh just shoot me a message in um, instagram and give me your address and i'll ship them to you, you know? good stuff thank you Efren. Yeah, thank sure. you um we do giveaways all the time on these channels on, on whenever me and Efren get together we'll to do a giveaway and we do giveaways on a saturday live show yeah. so if you haven't won tonight um please do make sure you watch one of the other shows and you'll get a chance to win there as well james do you all just be buying books you don't want all the time <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, really. yeah. Yeah, James, you know me. You know me. I've got no impulse control at all. I've got a stack of books here, and I've got no idea why I bought them. So they'll all be going in the giveaway box yeah. at some point. I have over 100 bins of comic books. God, everyone. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> well, let's talk about some books that won't end up in those comic boxes, because these are books that are coming out that we're just not interested. Now, that's not to say these are bad comics. They it's just perfect. don't don't float our boats, as it were. So, Efren. <laughs> I've got a story about this, but you've picked Department of Truth. Okay. So when this book first came out, I loved it. Okay. I'm not saying that I didn't, and I really enjoyed it. The twist, you know, they had, they brought back Lee Harvey Oswald. Um, I was like, wow, you know, but as the storyline just went on and on, I think a couple of months were missed and I got so convoluted and I got confused by reading it, you know, and it's one by one of my favorite artists, James Tinney the fourth. And it's finally, it's been, I think, at least a year since the last issue came out. Oh, is it? I think. Wow. It's been a while. I yeah. mean, from what I recall, either that or I just haven't been paying attention. Like I said, um, it's just my opinion. You know, like I read the series and I just got confused a little bit. So I, I stopped reading it. And it may be great for somebody else. But to me, I just don't want to read this anymore. Yeah. You know, I love this cover, though. I won't say that I don't. That's JFK and his wife, Jacqueline, yeah. before they got shot. And they I think, have a lady in red right below them, you know, so. I think Martin Simmons' artwork in this is spectacular. Yeah. If, if that's your style, you know, if you like that style, um, it really does jump out. But I have to say, I've bought three trade paperbacks of this. And I think I've got the fourth trade paperback uh -huh. to read. Um, I, I went into it thinking this was going to be X-Files, and I'm a huge X-Files fan. Yeah. Like you, Efren, I think I enjoyed the first couple of issues, the first arc, perhaps. Yeah. But then it got so confusing. And Me what too. didn't help, maybe it's a did, I don't, I don't know, but if you're reading it in trade paperback, for some reason, it just misses a couple of issues. So there must have been right. two standalone issues or something. So it goes, I can't remember what it is, but it goes like from issue five to eight or something. It's weird. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, th this got too confusing for me so i've i've not picked this up since and i'd be interested to know if it's any better i'd be interested to know if people are still enjoying it and, and that's the only reason i picked it because it just got yeah. too confusing to me i was reading it and i was like i was i was like oh my god it's making my head hurt a little bit just all the little wording you know the way yeah. the captions of the words and stuff the usual bubbles that they have yeah. in, it was just too much for me and like I said, I'm not saying it's a bad book but these are just books that we that peter and i individually say nope i'm not gonna yeah. buy any uh fuzzy um hit us up afterwards mate i've got the trade you can have the trade see what you think of it um james tinian is overrated i think james tinian does some stunning work phil real stunning work but there's no denying that that i think some of his work kind of starts to diminish the longer yeah. he's doing a, a series and um, nice what was it nice cabin on the lake cabin on the lake or something like oh, that yeah started strong but started yep. to lose us near the end me and you both said Efren, and again this is just our opinion we both said we didn't particularly care for the was it the closet he did oh yeah i was yeah. that book i was like oh my god i can't wait to read this book but at the end i went oh no yeah the uh, the deviant is brilliant at the moment and i'm really hoping it continues with that pace i hope he keeps that strong yeah. throughout the rest of it because it's, it's a good book the deviant um <laughs> <laughs> I prefer Justin in the 30s, a good lad. Yeah. Speaking, I mean, to be honest, 
James also wrote The Woods, which is one of my favourite books. Three volumes of that, and it's a complete story. Um, and that's very, very cool. Very cool theory. He's done some good stuff, but I think people cream their pants too much over his books. I'll tell you one thing. He was at San Diego Comic-Con last year, and I was fortunate enough to get some books signed by him. He had a long line. And they had to cap it off a lot of the times. And when I did talk to him briefly, he's a very nice gentleman. Yeah. You know, just did, took time to talk to me for a quick couple of seconds, you know. Did you have to pay for the signatures, Efren? No, he was doing it for free. Yeah. So he was at Thought Bubble um last year or the year before, I think it was. And it was re he was there under Scott's collectibles, I think. And he was really pleasant, very, very good yeah. to talk to. It's free yeah. signatures. And he had it in place, which I wish other people would do, where he would sign five books yep. and then you went to the back of the queue if you had more to do, which I think is absolutely fair, you know. Um, Fuzzy, I couldn't get away with Blue Book. I really couldn't, which is ridiculous because it's right up my street. I love my UFOs and all that kind of stuff. But Blue Book was just naff. Yeah, met and spoke with him at Thought Bubble, lovely bloke. Yeah, he was. He was very nice, yeah. very nice. So my pick for a book that I'm just not going to read, and again, this is just my take. Um, sorry, Phil. Ven Venomverse Reborn. I'm Venomed out. I'm spider man <laughs> out, I think, to be honest. I'm kind of done with these mindless, endless versions of the same character. The, the web of Spider-Man, I think it is, or something, mm -hmm. has been some decent bits in it. But overall, just not not the best for me. So the thought of picking up a, a Venom version of that with different versions of Venom across a different universe and all the rest of it, it's just not for me. Um, I, can't, I can't be chewed. I, I kind of think with a lot of these characters, less is more. So for me, Venom is a bit like Harley Quinn. Started off as a good villain, villain a good, good kind of anti-hero character. Um, and then we've just diluted them to the point of they're just not... They don't stand out anymore, personally. Um, so yeah, I'll not be reading this. This is the one that you'll be picking up. Um, I don't think so. You know, I, I do love the. I really enjoy the character of Venom. I'm reading his single book right now, and they have so many Venoms in this storyline right now, like past, present, and just all kinds of Venoms coming out. And I'm yeah. reading it. I'm going, boy, this is confusing. Yeah. You know, there's. I was like, so I, I hear you. Man. I don't know. Yeah. I just don't think I'm gonna get this one. Yeah, there's lots of people agreeing, which is surprising because I thought Venom was a big fan favorite. A lot of people, money ruins so many characters. I couldn't agree more, James. Couldn't agree more. And I think it, you know, I I think back to the Joker as a character. You know, he was never more scary and impactful as a villain is when we started the new Fifty Two run and they got rid of him for I think was he gone for a year or two? Okay. And then he came back with his face having been cut off and all that kind of stuff. He felt like a really powerful bad guy again. When you're seeing him every week, it just, it's like, yeah. oh, it doesn't There's do a anything. Wolverine Venom in this cover. I just noticed that on yeah, the right yeah. hand and the left yeah. is a She-Hulk Venom. She-Hulk Venom, yeah. yeah. Oh, God. Nah. I'm probably going to read the first issue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, a couple of quick reviews for you guys. A couple of things that we've been reading that we just wanted to touch on. Efren, I've been reading this as well, but you've picked Moon Knight, the new, the new take on Moon Knight. So, um... I read the previous issue of Moon Knight and I really enjoyed it. Um, I've read other past series of Moon Knight and to be honest with you, it's confusing because of the split personalities and the God Khonsu, if I'm pronouncing it right, him talking to him. I was like, boy, this is confusing. So I've never really have enjoyed reading Moon Knight. His last series, the one right before this, um, I liked it because he started getting some other, you know, characters started showing up like Tigra and these two characters that became vampires and a brother, a yeah. so-called brother, you know, was also like a Moon Knight character that didn't even know about, who was like his antagonist at the beginning. Uh, but then, you know, I started coming around to that series and at the end of that series, you know, he died, you know, no, no big surprise. And then this new series came out, it's called Vengeance of the Moon Knight. And I was like, God, is this gonna be any good? But he's still dead in the series and the remaining characters uh, of the, the past series are taking up his mantle, so to speak, and they're helping. He, he has a, a mission and it's called the Midnight Mission, where basically he helps people, but he helps them at, at night, you know, people who are in trouble. And the remaining characters have taken on his mantle, along with Tiger and, and the other four characters. There's also Eight Ball, if you remember him, he used to yeah, be like yeah. a, a minor villain. I go, God, he's kind of interesting now, you know, he came over to his side. So I really have him enjoying this series. 
and there's this one character who has been dressing up as Moon Knight, but it's not him. It's not Mark Scepter. Um, I won't tell you who the character is, but they just recently revealed it. So it's been an ongoing series, and it's you know what? When I read comic books, I want to be entertained, yeah. and this book has been entertaining. So I've I've been reading this as well, Efren, and each issue kind of focuses on each member of the Midnight yeah. Mission having kind of therapy almost about yeah. Mark Spector's death. And I found that quite interesting. The the new Moon Knight, I'm not going to spoil it like you said, um, that took me left field. I kind of you thought did. I knew who it was going to be. And then when they revealed the character, it's someone I'm, I'm aware of. And I kind of yeah. thought, ooh, that through us. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I'm actually enjoying this. This is, yeah. it's an easy read. It's not a one I'd break my neck to get to, but it's, it's a book that actually is better than I think it, it I was expecting it to be. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. And that's why I picked it, you know. Good pick. Good pick. I like that. Um Fuzzy cued you nicely there. You absolutely did, Fuzzy. Well done, mate. We'll have to start paying Fuzzy before long. <laughs> um my pick is the incredible Hulk, the latest run of this. This started off really strongly. Um it's starting to falter a little bit, which is a shame. The, the premise of this is that the queen of kind of all monsters is set all kind of beasts and monsters against the Hulk. He's fighting with Bruce Banner still, but he's got a young girl who he's kind of, um, who's attached herself to, her, to him now and is following him around and stuff. There's been some strong issues of this, some really strong issues. The, a couple of issues ago, we're introduced to a new version of Ghost Rider, which was very, very cool. Oh, yeah. Um, I read that one, yeah. I enjoyed that a lot. Yeah. This last few issue, issues have really suffered, I think, for me personally, from having a guest artist in. So the art style has changed quite a bit inside and it's it's not floating me boat. Um, I'm enjoying it. I'll continue to read it. Um, but I the kind of need to wrap this particular arc up now a little bit because the, the arc of kind of each issue, or oh, he has another monster he's happened to wander into, and his fighting has kind of ran its course a little bit for us now, to be honest. And the artwork in the last three issues, two, three issues in particular, has been crap. Just not for me at all. Not for me at all. So started strong in its waning a little bit for us, yeah. I think. Um, you've been reading this one, Efren. I've been reading it, and I agree. I, I like the beginning of it, especially the monster. You know, they brought in monsters that he's, you know, hunting or they're hunting him. But um, yeah, I've been starting to I've been starting to lose interest on that. Yeah. Now, so. Good stuff. Um, James, Peter, completely unrelated. Just got billed a minute ago for the DWG saying, "Ooh, excellent." So I don't know if you've taken part in this, um, Efren, but Slab Crusaders has facilitated send some comics over to CGC to get um, signed by Daniel Warren Johnson. Okay. Thank you very much, James. Looking forward to that. Me just send us my bill whenever it's ready. Um, but yeah, that's going to be cool. I've sent three books i think three or four books off um so yeah looking forward to that it's really interesting i don't know if it'll work out so I, so james there's absolutely no pressure um at all because uh, i know the cgc do their own thing but but basically james said that there was a potential that daniel warren johnson would write something on the book as well as just his signature so you could get you know i mean if you know your transformers law you know you could get till all or one or protect the all spark or whatever you want to be transforming roll out and um, so be interested to see if he does that because that would be pretty cool if he does uh fuzzy the same hulk could have ended after 10 issues yeah I, th I think you're probably right fuzzy it's it's feeling now like it's just churning it out you know um and i'm not really sure what's happening anymore in terms of the overarching bad guy woman i don't know where she is in it um phil the art's horrendous yeah yeah it's it's kind of faltered over the last few issues i think um dead man they'll be building for issue 800 yeah it's not far sure. off you're right you're not far off the hulk series has been such a letdown i enjoyed the start of it james it's had a few good issues but i think it's it's kind of um it's kind of starting to, to peter out a bit now would he add filler to issue number seven <laughs> yeah yeah potentially um okay moving on moving on this week so this week next week so books that are coming out at the next kind of comic book release Efren, love I, this love I this knew, i knew you were going to pick this one so i said i wouldn't be surprised if it was just a combined pick of the week <sighs> i've been reading this series um this is american uh, avengers twilight another story you know that's what happens in the future with the avengers 
great storyline. You know, I've been reading this from the beginning and, and I love Hawkeye. Hawkeye is one of my favorite characters. I'm not sure who this character is. I don't think it's Clint Barton, um, but it looks like it may probably, a, we could tell it's a female, but hopefully it's a good, you know, the storyline has been excellent up to now. So yeah. does America and democracy are under attack. Can the Avengers of tomorrow save a country from itself as their greatest enemy dismantles everything Captain America holds dear? A whole dear. It's a battle decades in the making and no one is safe. So this for me is this for me. I mean, Phil saying it here, you know, um, book of the year contender. I think this year so far has had some cracking books. This is very much in my my top three. Um, I think if if the year continues, I'm going to struggle because there are some great books beneath the trees, you know, Infernals, this, you know, there are some really, really good books. I'm loving this. I cannot wait to get this in some kind of oversized hardcover book just to keep on my shelf next to my Dark Knight Returns and things like that. that you know? really, I really have enjoyed this series. Yeah, it's it's stunning. It's stunning. Yeah. Um, just jumping to the chat. Andy, I've just understood your comment there now. You say on Transformers with Daniel Warren Johnson, say, Filler, how dare you? How dare you? Um, better than Andy thinks. <laughs> I can again that. That would be good. Um, Phil saying book of the year contender here from Marvel. Agree. Fuzzy's yeah. a big fan of this one as well. I know he's enjoying it. Um, really need to catch up with Twilight. Chris, it's a great story. It really is a very, very good story. Um, and yeah, that's Bullseye from the last few issues who's become Hawkeye. Doesn't Thor say that to her in the last issue? Thor, Cap, one of them say, I, I recognise a Hawkeye when I see one. Um and again, good at it's coming to an end. Me too, Fuzzy. Yeah. Me too. Great pick, everyone. Great pick. Now, this is left field, and people in the chat will not agree with this one, I'm sure. But I've been talking about this for a little while. This yeah. is the Roxxon Presents um, Thor book. So this is... Oh, how to explain it? This is <laughs> within the Mighty Thor comic. The company in that comic are producing their own comics based on their version of Thor because they yeah. bought the copyright of the character of Thor mental so this is the first issue of their comic book the mighty thor um the rocks on age of comics begins in his secret identity as ai spokes guru chad hammer i mean you've got us right there chad hammer come on and yeah. um, the son of odin knows blah 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 he's getting into a fight with a whole host of characters um but then it says you know who's the, who's in this issue you've got the minotaur the executioner enchantress and the thor truck superb superb i i think this is going to be silly it's meant to be silly i think it's going to be kind of stupid but i just think it's a really interesting fun thing for them to do so yeah i'm looking i'm looking forward to this um i think this is going to be good fuzzy saying i fancy this i hope it's tongue-in-cheek though and not serious at all F fuzzy i think it's got to be i mean the name you know chad hammer the thor truck i think this is just going to be i think this is going to be a laugh i think it's going to be a fun book to read so yeah, looking forward to that one. So when you first explained this to me, it took me a while to put I I had not caught up with reading the regular Thor series until I finally yeah. did. But there was when I was reading the original Thor series and they mentioned they're gonna come off the comic book, and he's like looking through it and he's shocked. What does he care for? That it's gonna be yeah. another book on him. I don't understand that it has some kind of power over him or something like yeah. that. That's where I'm at right now with it, you know. Yeah. Even when you explained it to me, it took me minutes to figure out, I kept on saying, what is going on here with this book? I am going to read this book, you know, yeah. see how it is. But I, I think it's just going to be all tongue in cheek. It's I'm just like, going to be funny. It's going to be yeah. funny. And it's designed it, within the Immortal Thor run. It's designed to kind of attack Thor and diminish Thor's reputation. Okay. Okay. So it's, it's a bit like, you know, someone now publishing a past point one comics yeah. comic book and making you look silly and things like that, you know? Okay. So it's, it's PR for them, I guess. Yeah, but yeah, yeah I think it sounds interesting. Yeah. Andy, Beneath the Trees or Avengers 2? Avengers Twilight, what you reckon is the best so far? Avengers for me. Beneath the Trees, superb, but the interaction in Avengers is just superb thoughts. Yeah. That's a real hard question, Andy. That's a real hard question. I love Beneath the Trees because it's unique and it's different and it's, it's something I've not had before. But Avengers... Yeah is characters I've loved for years being actually treated with a bit of respect and made to feel like fleshed out characters, which I don't think they have been for a while. Yeah. So I have to say I'd probably go Avengers for me. Yeah. What about you, Efren? I, I, I'd have to go with Avengers just because I've been reading it for decades. And But I I mean, 
they're like right they're right next to each other and you know yeah. they're such great books to read but just a different take do you think when you're done uh there's always there's not yeah, let me take that all back sorry when you read a comic book for so many years and decades it's hard to come up with something new and fresh yeah, yeah. you know which i think the avengers twilight has done it yeah yeah and i can't help but read avengers twilight and think in 10 15 years time when the MCU is completely on its knees, they should bring back all of the kind of, you know, Chris Helmsworth, yeah. Chris Evans, and do this story yeah. in the MCU, you know? I think it would be really interesting to, to see. Yeah. Okay, guys, we're going to wrap things up now with just a quick look at a couple of classic covers. Me and Efren both pick a comic book that we're, we're like. I've cheated slightly, Efren, because mine's got two covers. Um, but we've picked these books. So, Efren, you've picked Fantastic Four. To, to me, the silver age of comic books, that, to me, that's my golden age of comic books. I mean, I think there's yeah. nothing else like the silver age. And whenever these teams, any teams would, you know, meet up, to me, it was like an epic event. Now it just happens like every other month, yeah. you know, they're always teaming up. But I love these old covers. And this is Fantastic Four number 28. It says, guest stars galore as the FF tangles with the X-Men, the Mad Thinker, Puppet Master, and the awesome Android. I just love this cover. Um, that's why I picked it. It just brings back so much nostalgia for me. No, I think this is a great cover. I do, yeah, I love it. And it's got the, the Mad Thinker as robot yeah. in the background there. Is it yeah. Andy? Awesome Andy or something? Andy, yeah. Um, here's Andy, yeah. yeah. Now his name is Andy, yeah. yeah. Just classic classic cover i love that one Efren. it's really really cool really cool i've gone with um this superman 75 just purely because of the memories and the emotion it evokes yep. you've got the original kind of polybag black cover that's not the original polybag that's the yep. um i think the, the 30th anniversary foil cover but the original book if you went for this was kind of the first premium edition comic i bought as a kid and if you bought that premium edition it came in a polybag with the comic, with the obituary newspaper yeah. cutting. You got the black armband to wear to show that you're in mourning for Superman, which I loved. But that cover with the, you know, the Superman cape on the stick, yeah. I just think, you know, it is amazing. And it uh, it it rocked the world, really. And it, I mean, it really did, because it was in the, like, the mainstream news and everything that they were killing Superman, you know? Back when death actually had a little bit of an impact, I guess. Yeah. I mean, sure. obviously you got better you know yeah. um but yeah i just i just love that cover i think it's a real striking image in a simple image as well so yeah love it um just jump into the chat guys we've got 21 people watching so thank you so much for that um this is a great great um turnout from you guys so thank you really do appreciate you jumping in and watching we're just going to jump on this phil saying chip um should ditch batman and go back to being marvel exclusive give us more twilight quality i've not read his batman but I'm, i've not heard positive things about it phil so um so yeah you should come back to marvel and certainly i'm all for more more of this quality of batman am i right R reminders in the chat did chip sadarsky write the spider-man life stories book as well I'm not sure if he did or not, because that was a very cool story. I like that one. The panel with Thor saying the only thing he can't avenge is the inventability of growing old. Yeah, it was, um, yeah, heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. I love, I still love the panel where Thor lands and he says, what, something along the lines of Captain, shall we assemble? Or something like that. I just thought, oh, be brilliant writing. Fuzzy. Beautiful work, chaps. Cracking job as always. Thank you very much, Fuzzy. Appreciate that, mate. Um, Justice League Twilight storyline would be cool. Have they done that Marvel versus DC Twilight? Yeah. I don't think they have, Andy. I don't think they've done, like... Well, they've done... I guess they've done Kingdom Come, which was kind of that, that theme. But, yeah, that would be very interesting to do something like that. And Phil's confirming, yeah, life story. Okay, that's a great book as well. I enjoy that one. Okay, chaps. Um coming soon so books out next week that we're interested in um sorry we've done that stuff that's happening on with channels soon that we're interested in um efren i've just picked a few of the images from your latest videos there and stuff you've got coming up so tell a little bit about these bud um the picture on the left i picked up some albums uh that's my latest video i picked up some of i picked up the uh what are they called? Golden? No, so, yeah. So if you haven't watched Efren's video yet, go check it out because this is a real bit of, of comic book history. These are the gold key um, comic books that came out. I and think it's like about literally... They came out. Yeah, it's like a year or two after the original books were yeah. published. And it was 
a reprint of the comic plus a record that you got. Yeah. Um, so are stunning, absolutely stunning books. Yeah, I got them. I, I explained it all on the on the uh, video. I got them on a Facebook group, you know, um, negotiated with the person who was selling them. I figured I got a good prize for them. And <laughs> yeah, those are massive CDs. Yeah, the, the middle picture is what the book comic books that I picked up at WonderCon. And uh, the one on the right, that's uh, artist Livio Ramondelli, who did the Iron Man for me. And I spoke with him and he said he'd be willing to come on our channels to do an interview, which is on um, the 18th. Brilliant. And then also we're going to be interviewing writer David Pepos on, I'm not sure what day it is. Um, it's um, after the 18th. I think it's on the 22nd yeah. or somewhere. It, uh, we'll let you know, you know when we're going to interview him. Yeah. He's doing The Punisher right now and among other books so yeah very nice people i've talked to them in the past so and just to add to an interview schedule i haven't chatted with you yet afrin but obviously you've been organizing all these interviews um i've got one in the pipeline as well which we'll do joint with the killer comic boys we're going yeah. to be interviewing the um the writer and artist of beneath the trees oh, wow. so he's he's agreed Dang. to come on the sh show in may i think he said so really looking forward to that really looking forward to that um and he's commenting on your thumbnails, yeah. Did, did Luke do your thumbnails? <laughs> Luke's the king of the kind of the thumbnail, yeah. yeah. Um, just that centre one there, Efren. I'm going to be talking tomorrow night on Saturday night show about the latest episode of X Men. Wow, wow, wow. Have you seen it yet? Are no. you all working your way through all the old ones? I'm working aren't you? my way through the original, so I made yeah. it be a spectator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. very cool. Couple of things from me. Um, we've got um, let's talk toys from Monday, Monday night's live show. Please check that out. We had a great fun show talking all things action figures. We we're straight off into fish fingers and um, dolls at one point, which was interesting. But do check that out. Um, I've got a video out about some recent pickups and also picked up um, Beneath the Trees, which we've just been talking about. And I've got a video out recently of my thoughts on Monkey Man, which was a film I saw um, earlier in the week, which was very, very interesting. So do check that out as well. Um, tomorrow on Saturday night, we've got our Saturday Night Live going live at nine o'clock. Um, here in the UK, we're going to be talking all the latest geeky news and reviews, trailer reactions, and talking about this, which is the announcement that there is going to be a last Ronin Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles live action movie. So really interested in that. I think that's going to be fun. Just to mention, please do go check out the Killer Comic Show every Thursday night, where we do all kinds of chemical Kimmick, comic book reviews and geeky news and we'll have a bit of a laugh and a bit of a carry on so please go check that out as well and do check out one good scare um, over on youtube one good scare show check out um, all the content there just released today james has just finished um, editing our take on godzilla and um, the matthew broderick version of the movie so check that one out because it is uh, is great fun as well that's your whack Efren, thank you so much. This has been great fun. Um, we've still got 17 people watching, which is fantastic for my little channel. So thank you so much to everybody that has been active in Hi. the chat. Oh, <laughs> we've got a star. How are you? Are you well? Good. I'm going to work. No, not good. Not good. Not good. Yeah, yeah give me money. <laughs> Bye. Just take some of these comics. Take some of these comics. Yeah, yeah. I know where you hide them. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. so yeah thank you very much everybody really do appreciate you all stopping by um, and we'll see you tomorrow night and with that we'll say good night night everybody night. Bye.